Zero Accounting Software 2023 Bank Fee to Bank Fee Transaction. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and use ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me. Therefore, I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the patting is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Custom Zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, the bank feed file. Duplicating some tabs to put our reports in, the balance sheet, the income statement like we do every time. Right click on the tab up top to duplicate it. And then we will right click the tab up top to duplicate it. Back to the tab to the middle, accounting drop down, we want that balance sheet report. And then we will tab to the right and go down to the accounting drop down again and of course the income statement changing that range in uh the date range that is dropping it down to 2023 uh january to december of 2023 the 31st of it where's the 31 there it is and update all right let's go to the first tab and open up our bank feed information that's in the accounting drop down, the bank accounts. We put our banking information in here. We've connected our checking account and we've connected our credit card account. So now we have what I would call like a bank feed to bank feed type of transaction, which actually actually could be a little bit confusing uh, when you first take a look at it. Now, of course, the bank feeds are designed to lower the level of confusion. But when you have a transaction that is involving, such as paying off the credit card, uh, two accounts that have bank feeds connected to it, then we have to think about, well, which side do we want to start from when we record the bank transaction, for example. So let me just kind of point out the issues. And this is also just uh, useful to note when you're thinking about a transfer. So anytime you're transferring from like a checking account to like another type of checking account, you have, a, you have similar kind of issues that can come into play. So for example, with the credit card, it's going to be money coming out of the checking account in order to pay off the credit card. So that means that both sides of the bank feeds will be able to read the data on their end, right? On the credit, on the checking account, it's going to be a decrease looking like a payment for something, of course, to paying off the credit card. And then on the credit card side of things, it's going to be showing as a payment. So meaning lowering uh, the credit card liability. So from a bank feed standpoint, we could start the transaction from either side. I could go to the checking account and I could find it in the bank feeds and then record it and then hopefully be able to match it to the credit card side. Or I could start at the credit card side and I could record it 
and basically match it to uh, the bank feed side of things. Now note, I also just wanna point out the difference between like a, a deposit type of form, an expense type of form, or a money in, a money out form, and then like a transfer type of form. And this I think makes a little bit more sense if you imagine that you had a similar transactions with two checkings accounts, like maybe one's a savings account and the other's a normal checking account and you have a transfer from the checking account to the savings account. So note that when you do that with just a normal transaction, if you're thinking about debits and credits or the two accounts that are impacted increases and increases, it's easy to think about. You just say, okay, well, the checking account's going down, credit or decrease, and the other account, the savings account's going up, therefore debit or increase. But when you start to add the forms to it, we add a level of complexity. And that's important because if I go into these accounts, sometimes I wanna filter these accounts uh, you may want to at some point filter these accounts by source document. So if I'm trying to sort my information by the increases to the account in the general ledger, I can go up top and I can filter. I can use my filtering tools and uh, filter by the source, right? Which is, here. here's our sources. Now, normally uh, when I go into here, I would think that a uh, receive money form would be an increase, right? And and a spend money form would be a decrease. So if I'm trying to look at the general increases, I can basically filter this and say, how about I just look at the, uh, you know, the receive money forms and update the reports and see if we can pick up uh, the increases, right? Now, so that, that, be that becomes useful for filtering your data. Now, if you used to transfer from one account to another, like a deposit form, then the deposit form would be useful or you can use that on the side where the, the account that's getting the money, in this case, the savings account, I could use a deposit form to increase that account. And that would look normal on the savings account side, but it would look strange in the checking account side because I would have a deposit or receive money form, which is actually decreasing the account, which makes it difficult to sort by because I, I would like everything that has a receive money to be increasing the both of the accounts the same is true if i use a spend money form i could use a spend money form to transfer from the checking account to like a savings account which would look correct on the checking account side of things because it's a decrease and it's a spend money form but in the savings account it would look like you have a spend money form that is increasing the account over there so again it would look funny and that's where the transfer comes in so the transfer is doing the same thing from a from a journal entry standpoint debits and credits or increases and decreases for two accounts but the transfer doesn't really look funny if it's an increase or a decrease is the general idea so keeping those in mind if i go back on over to my credit card i'm just going to click on the credit card this is the fast way to do it and then go into my reconcile we left off with just these payments now. So these are the payments to pay off the credit card balance. Now note, when I enter these payments, I will not necessarily be at zero at this point in time in my credit card balance because we still have that beginning balance issue, which we'll talk about when we do the bank reconciliations. But for now, we could just recognize that like for this 47729 is also gonna be on the banking side of things. If I go to the bank account, uh, in here and I go into my checking account, we would expect in the reconcile, we would have that uh, 47729 here. So I can kind of verify that they're on both sides of things. If I verify they're on both sides of things and zero didn't like pick it up and match them automatically as, we, as they didn't here, then I can enter a transaction for it. And I would think the easiest thing to do would be to enter it on the uh, on the checking account side of things. That's what I would normally do, right? In other words, we enter it over here on the bank feeds for the checking account, and then we'll go over to the credit card side of things and match it on the credit card uh, side of things because the other side of the transaction will be going to the credit card account. Now, the natural thing to do would be like, I'm gonna just create a transaction here, but note that zero is actually not gonna let you post something to another account that has a bank feed to it. Instead, they're gonna basically say, you gotta use the transfer thing, which kind of makes sense because then they're gonna stop you from doing that kind of problem 
where you could still kind of record something, but it doesn't look quite right. In, in other words, it doesn't have the, the best form that could be used. So, so in other words, let me show you what I mean here. If I tried to create a transaction here to pay off uh, the credit card and I go to add details and I say, okay, if I was gonna go down here and add the account, the other account is the credit card account, but they don't give us the bank accounts down here. They're not gonna let us record a transaction to another account that has bank feeds because the, I believe the rationale for that would be you don't wanna use this kind of form here. What you want to use is a transfer form uh, in this kind of situation. So, so therefore, we can cancel this. Now, before I cancel it, just note that if you're a little skeptical about the whole thing, you could record the transaction to like a clearing account. I used to do that when the bank feeds were like newer. I'd record it to like a clearing account on this side. And then when it goes to the credit card side, I record the other side to a clearing account. So the clearing account zeroes out. And that made me give me kind of like a double check that everything is working because I was a little bit skeptical to record these bank feeds directly to another account. But I'm more confident with them now, so I don't do that anymore. But you could do that if you wanted to, right? You could post this to a clearing account, and then the other side, uh, you could post uh, to a clearing account. So you can make a, a clearing account would be like a, some kind of balance sheet account. You could make it uh, a, another current asset or another current liability, not an income statement account because you want it to be permanent and it goes up and then back down to zero. But I'm gonna cancel this and then say, let's try the transfer. And then we're just gonna say, it's gonna be transferring to the credit card reference, uh, not this one, hold on a second. I'm on the wrong one. How did that happen? I'm going back up here. We're gonna go to the transfer. Hopefully that's still all made sense. We're gonna credit, we're gonna try transfer to the credit card uh, let's just call it payment. And I'm going to say, uh, okay. So we transferred that over. If I go to the balance sheet then, and we update the balance sheet, we should be able to check it out. So I'm going to go in to my checking account here. And let me show you what I mean by this sorting thing, because we haven't done a lot of the sorting. If I filter, a common filter tool is by the source, which is this column here. And then we might be able to say, okay, can I find a transfer? So they called it bank transfer. So I'll just say bank transfer, apply that, update. And then I can see uh, my transfer. So there's the, the 477. It's a transfer form as opposed to like a money, uh, a money out form, right? And if I go into it, you've got your transfer thing here instead of going back to the bank feed. So if I go back and I go back now on the credit card side, that means it already recorded the other side directly to the credit card. So I've already recorded over here. So if I go on to the credit card, I should be able to find my payment in here, which was done in the form of a transfer. So if I go down, we, have, we now have our payment. So now we see it here in the form of a transfer. So that's all we should see on the credit card side. The credit card side should be a lot easier to look at in terms of the kinds of transactions than the cash account, noting the cash account being the lifeblood of the company has the most different kind of things going in and out of it. Whereas when we look at the credit card, we're gonna have a lot of different things that we spent money on or charged on our credit card for, but they'll, they're all gonna be like the spend money form and then we're gonna pay off the credit card. That's all that should basically happen here usually. Uh, so, so we're, and you can create, you can imagine other scenarios where you pay the credit, other stuff with the credit card, but normally that's what you would see there. All right, let's go back to the first tab. Now you could do this the other way. Let, well, let's go to the credit card thing. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's hit the drop down. Let's go to the bank accounts and let's go into the credit card side. And I should see that other transaction that has been created but not yet reconciled. You can see it down here in the bank account transactions. So these are the account transactions that we made related to the credit card that weren't uh, that that weren't made by the bank, or or that we created as we reconciled. So how in the world did this get created? Because that doesn't make any sense. Because I'm creating my books for the credit card transactions from the credit card bank feeds. So how is it that I entered something on my side without it having been reconciled because I entered something on the checking account that recorded a transaction to the credit card side and hasn't yet been reconciled because now we need to match out the transaction. 
So if I go to the, the reconcile tab, I should be able to find that one and just say, there it is, it's green, it's identified it. And so we can just match it out, it's a match, no problem. It's not gonna record anything new, it's just gonna match it out. So we'll just say, okay, boom. Now, uh, so, so you could do it the other way, right? Now I'm on the credit card, this is another payment that should be on both sides. So I could just say, why don't I do it from the credit card side? Now, I normally wouldn't do it from the credit card side because usually I think most people think of payments coming from their checking account to pay off, pay down the credit card. So I think that's probably the flow most people would do, but just note that you could do it the other way. I could say this is a transfer uh, to the, the checking account, right? And so this is a payment, so it's gonna pay down the credit card which means it's going, it's kind of a transfer to the credit card to pay down the credit card, right? And then it's going out of the checking account. So let's just say transfer or payment, we'll just say, and do it this way. So let's go ahead and record that. Boom, shaka laka. And then we're gonna go back to the, uh, to the balance sheet. And then if I go into my checking account and let's do that filtering trick again, because that was fancy and fancy is good unless it's fancy pantsy because I don't like when the pants are too fancy but fancy on the filtering fancy filters is good so let's go into the bank uh, transfers and then into that and then there it is fancy fancy filters fancy filters all right uh, then back up and then let's go to the credit card side of things. If we may, down to the credit card, checking out what's going on with the, with the credit card. What's happening? What's happening with the credit card? Uh, we have another payment down here, paying down. So that looks normal, looks good. All right, let's do the last one. Let's just do it the normal way again. So we've saw the two main ways you could do it when you're dealing with these bank feed to bank feed transactions. But I think normally, uh, if you're trying to come up with a system, most people are gonna be going from the credit cards, I mean, from the checking account side of things to the credit card side of things, right? They're gonna go into their checking account and try to be reconciling stuff. And when they see a credit card payment, they're gonna record it on this side first. So there it is. Now, now this one, actually, I, this one needs to be verified. Okay, let's finish that process. We entered it on the credit card side. We have not yet entered it on the checking account side, or we, we entered it, but we haven't matched it. In other words, let me just do the same thing I did with the credit card. If I go to the account transactions over here, notice we have, we're basically constructing our books from the bank feeds, uh, but we have this, this uh, credit card transaction, where did it go, uh, that, that came through and it's unreconciled we didn't we didn't make that ourselves we made that from the bank feeds on the credit card side of things right so now we can match that out so i'm going to go match it out it's not going to record anything new it's just going to verify helping us with our bank reconciliation now i think i had one more on the credit card uh payments so let's just do the last one to complete it is, will now be complete. The cycle is now complete. All right, so we're gonna go, there's another one, paying off the credit card. So we're just gonna say, uh, this is transfer, transfer, and I'm just gonna call it a payment again, payment and credit card, and let's go ahead and record it. That'll record it and reconcile and then on the other side, let's just finish it before we check it out on the financials. Uh, we'll uh, drop it down to the bank accounts again and go into the credit card side of things. And on this side, we can see on uh, the credit card, is this the credit card? Yeah, we have this unreconciled amount, the three, I was looking at the 99, that's why it was throwing me off, the 309, uh, 96 unreconciled that we need to reconcile. So I'm gonna go back into the reconcile side and we just see it, boom, that's the last one, last bit. Get every piece of enjoyment you can. Click in that button because you don't get to click another blue button until you spend more money. So boom. See, most people like spending money for because to buy stuff, but I like to 
see it come through the zero accounting system and click the blue button that's why I, that's the that's why I, I do it anyways i don't know what I'm, I'm well let's go back into the balance sheet and let's go into the checking account and check out the transfer again and we'll go into this fancy filters fancy filters down to the source and bank transfer so there's our bank transfers looking uh looking good that's that last one i think and then if i go back and we go into our credit card we're gonna say let's go on down to the credit card it's gone it has dis is it gone uh it is gone i see why <laughs> it's not gone uh, uh, uh zero put it up top here in the cash account so i'll talk about that in a second if i go into it though we could see the same thing here we could say uh why well, there's the the payments have been made looks good okay going back up now now you might say like why does zero keep doing this they did this to us with the checking account they put the checking account down at the bottom like in the liabilities before and now they put the credit card up top and i've worked with other accounting software and the other accounting software doesn't do that like if you work with like a quickbooks online for example it doesn't move it never moves i don't believe uh, i'm almost positive it never it will never move the checking account to a liability right it doesn't move the credit card to a debit but actually that's the right thing to do from a reporting standpoint because like when we saw the credit card go into a liability the the it switched from an asset to a liability or a liability to an asset same thing happened with the credit card uh at this time so zero is actually doing the more proper thing it could be a little bit i could see why maybe quickbooks didn't do that i think it might have just been a coding thing at first because they didn't they, you know it's easier to lock it in place and not do that i was i don't know but uh it, but it also it's a little confusing to people and when they're looking for it and they're like it flipped but it actually is more proper from a reporting standpoint so i kind of think it's a good thing actually that uh, that it's like that here and then you could still find it on the trial balance but the thing that's happened here is we overpaid our credit card so we overpaid so now the credit card owes us money we have a credit balance you know we have a a balance we would call it a debit balance now this is where it gets another thing that's kind of funny when you deal with credit card companies is they or anytime you're dealing with a vendor this concept of debits and credits gets mixed up and people start to 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 use it as shorthand you know so for example uh if if the credit card company if i called the credit card company and they said oh you overpaid and you have a credit balance in your account of 9905 uh that would basically mean that we could spend you know they owe us money we could spend you know we could spend the money on it it's a decrease when you're talking to them because on their side of things uh, a credit a credit balance usually you are an accounts receivable to them you're an asset to them because uh because you owe them money right so if they credit your account they're lowering the balance on their side but on our side it's obvious it's the opposite because we're on the other side of the table so so to us when we record the credits as a liability when we pay for things and we take enter a charge we're crediting our liability account which is a bad thing on our side right because it's our books not their books and then and right now we overpaid we overpaid and therefore we have a debit higher than the credit which doesn't usually happen in a credit card and that's why it flipped from a liability to an asset up here and so we have a debit balance to us of 9905 which is good because we've overpaid and and so we have so they owe us money if i called the credit card company they'd say, they'd also say it's good that you have 9905 but they'd say you have a credit balance in the account because it's on their side of the books which is that's bad for them it's a liability to them because that means they owe us so in their side of things their asset of us owing them money would have flipped to a liability i just had to point that out because uh it confuses people oftentimes anyways it's uh but you might ask well why do i have a 9905 balance because i paid off the entire thing that's how much they said i owed 
We have that possibly because we need to adjust the beginning balances. We've only been entering the transactions that have happened uh, during the time frame. And, and, we'd, and, and if we had the credit card before we started entering transactions, then we're gonna have that beginning balance issue. Same thing with the checking account. Uh, when we first reconcile, we're gonna have this beginning balance issue. So we'll deal with those uh, in future presentations on both the credit card and then the checking account side of things. And we kind of think about that possibly when you do your bank reconciliation. And one more thing to note, as I do this, you might be saying, I'm reconciled now. I have reconciled because I checked everything off. Well, you haven't reconciled yet. You, you finished doing the reconciling kind of process, but the reconciliation is the actual report that's supposed to be tying out the difference as of a point in time between the bank balance and the book balance. And if it's still off, uh, then we still have a problem, right? So this should, and if everything's going perfectly, then we would be done and we would be reconciled here. But this isn't really a reconciliation. This is the process of reconciling and we're not there yet. And so we'll get there. We'll talk about that beginning balance issue later. Once we fix that beginning balance issue, then doing this process for the credit cards should pretty much all the time get us to being reconciled because we're basically constructing our books directly from the bank feeds with the credit cards, which may not always be the case with the checking account. Okay.